All right, what's going on guys? We hit the let's go live button. Hopefully this works. Sometimes it likes to shut down right when you hit let's go live, which is always fun. So anyway, good morning. Happy Monday. I don't know if today's a holiday or what. I think it's supposed to be President's Day. Um, had appointments set with some businesses and I don't know if they're actually going to go through or not if anybody's working. So anyway, we'll get some stuff done. Uh, today we're going to be going through the GFI lawsuit. And um, this one's going to be a little bit different, but has some similarities to some of the things that we've already been talking about. So whether you're getting a th you're thinking about getting into GFI, maybe you're a WFG agent, or you're newly getting recruited over there, I think this is going to be kind of important to understand. Or maybe you're a, a current WFG agent, and you just want a better understanding of kind of what's happening in the lawsuits. Uh, we'll kind of go through some of that. Also, there's been some terrible marketing stuff that's going on. I want to show you some of that and what not to do. Um, really, really bad, I think, on the way they're, they're doing it and the guy attached his license number and everything else. So don't do that stuff. So we'll get into that a little bit. And uh, the reason why I wanted to do this too is that um, to help people kind of make an educated decision, I'm going to try to be fair. You guys have been awesome with me. You guys have said that I've been uh, at least uh, trying to be somewhat in the middle of, of what th what's going on and being fair to both sides. And so GFI is, is uh, basically, if you're wondering, it's a spinoff of WFG. Most of you guys probably already know that, um, which seems to be like most of the big companies that are out there. It seems like WFG creates almost all of their competitors, uh, whether it's PHP or um, uh, PFA or HGI or... Um, I don't think FFL really falls in there, but now GFI is in there. And uh, so it's kind of interesting. They've created um, so many of their competitors. And actually, I, a lot of people were saying in some of the comments, they think that the, the exit of PHP was similar to GFI. It was long before me. I think that was like 2009. I may have gotten a hold of those court documents, or, or I could potentially do it. If there's enough people interested, I don't know if we need to dive back into that, but I think that might be something that's interesting. So if that's something that appeals to you, if you would actually like to see that down in the comments, put PBD. And if I get maybe like 100 people that are interested in that, I'll see if I can get those court documents. I think I found somebody who has them. Um, so we'll kind of get into that. Uh, but kind of as we start, just to be fair, I don't think this lawsuit is going to stop Eric at all. I don't think it's going to stop GFI. I don't think GFI is going to go under. Um, I don't think any of that's really going to matter. I think it's just going to come down to um, just some dollar amounts that kind of get exchanged, but I don't think it's going to change the fact of what's going on. So, um, and and win or lose, I think it's still going to be a net positive for Eric at the end of the day. And, and that just kind of is what it is. Um, and I think that with his leadership and the people that are going over, they'll figure out whatever they need to figure out. So if you were hoping that they were going to go under, I don't. I don't think that's going to happen. We'll go through the lawsuit and you kind of make that decision on your own. Um, but let's kind of dive in. Oh, and actually, do, does anybody know, um, as we kind of get into this, does anybody know this dude? Let me pull this up. Content and was trying to, he did a terrible video. He was trying to explain what was going on in this lawsuit. And it was absolutely horrendous. And I tried to post... Uh, in his thing and say, hey, I think you're kind of inaccurate on this. If you want to see the full video, come see mine. And he deleted all my stuff. So I might have to do a video about that. I don't know if you know this guy. He seems like a cool guy to me, but he was completely wrong on what's going on with this lawsuit stuff. So we might have to do an answer to that uh, as well. But I don't know if you guys know him or not. So anyway, let's just get into it. Um, between WFG and um, GFI. All right, so as you can see here, plaintiff, WFG, they're suing GFI. Uh, this one's going to be a civil action. Here is the case number if you want to look that up. I believe it's based out of, uh, yeah, Wyoming. So if you want to try to look that one up, you can do that as well, but I'll post it at the end. So um, obviously we're talking World Financial Group. They are filing a complaint and request for injunctive relief against GFI. And WFG brings this action to stop the ongoing raid of WFG agents. So basically what's happening is GFI is just moving all of their WFG agents over again. This is something that's happened a few times. And they're being directed by uh, the defendant and GFI, which should be held accountable for its illegal actions. And this is kind of up for debate a little bit in the California one that's going on. 
uh, they're saying that non-solicitation is basically a, uh, to have a provision like that is is illegal. Um, so you, basically, Eric wants permission to be able to go in and, and take agents from WFG without any kind of recourse or action that's going on in the California case. And he's basically citing California case law, saying that he should be able to do it because you're not supposed to have a non-solicitation clause in your documentation. We'll see kind of how that goes. But anyway, GFI was formed on October 2023, is operated by Eric Olson, a recently terminated WFG agent, Sandra Olson, a former WFG agent, and Eric's wife. GFI website indicates that it operates in the United States. They formed GFI in Wyoming for two reasons, for the unlawful purpose of receiving WFG agents, and they were directly and indirectly recruited by the Olsons and their co-conspirators in violation of their contracts with WFG and the law, and they are concealing identities of WFG owners. So Wyoming doesn't require LLC members to be disclosed, and this is why and it's entirely just a rumor, so don't spread that around. But that's why some people are thinking maybe if there's somebody involved like a uh, Insperity or a, uh, Patrick Bet David or somehow maybe there are other members in this LLC that WFG can't see. So who might be funding some of this stuff? They have no clue. And again, those are just entirely rumors of people that I've mentioned. I don't know if that really... I don't know, lands for me, but it, it potentially could be true, true. GFI's ongoing scheme is broad, nefarious, and illegal. GFI and its employees and its co-conspirators use WFG's confidential compensation and organizational data to target specific teams of high-performing agents with spouses who also served as WFG agents. This violates WFG's contracts, confidentiality provisions, and the law. GFI, its employees, and its co-conspirators recruit uh, co-conspirators recruit a WFG agent to resign his or her WFG account to the spouse who has remained by WFG and then join GFI. This tactic is dubbed the anchor strategy, enabling the company to generate business from GFI while collecting income from GFI. So again, it's not that you can't create a, a competitive company. It's how they're doing it. So they're, they're staying with WFG. They're having one of the spouses go over to GFI and then they're moving their clients and their uh, agents from one to the other while they're collecting a paycheck from WFG and moving people over to GFI. These actions violated WFG's contract, non-solicitation provisions and the law. Third, the spouse who remained at WFG would spread lies and misinformation about WFG to encourage other agents to resign and join WFG or to join GFI. And I've had a lot of people who are very concerned about what's going on. A lot of the misinformation has been about ownership, and it's opened up some great conversation to ask what agents actually want. But um, if it's misinformation, and this is still what we're trying to figure out, this is how all this kind of started, is are they lying about those things, which they've been caught in a few lies now, but it doesn't mean they're lying about everything, is what's going on with that ownership program, and, and are they creating... GFI to make a better mousetrap or a better hamburger or a better company? Or are they creating GFI purely out of the idea that Eric's talked about being a billionaire as long as he's been in the industry and that's his pathway to do it? I don't know. So this conduct violated multiple provisions of WFG's contract and the law. Finally, co-conspirators who stayed at WFG would eventually join GFI after fraudulently collecting income streams, recruiting as many WFG agents as possible to join over to GFI and attending the winter conference in Hawaii at the expense of World Financial Group. This fraudulent screen, uh, scheme is being carried out right now by GFI and its employees and stakeholders, whomever, whomever and wherever they are. So they still don't know who all is involved. They were trying to get um, some disclosure but Eric is kind of playing some games on not wanting to disclose stuff. So they're trying to get his uh, phone records and text messages and figure out how this scheme has actually uh, been going on, but he's kind of been avoiding all of that. So for its part, the evidence indicates GFI has created the singular unlawful purpose of stealing WFG's confidential information, insurance agents, and business. Consequently, its very formation violates Wyoming law. They, yeah, they've basically copied everything. So the um, 
the contracts, uh, as far as income goes, how they built their structure. Even we just read their agent agreement. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend reading that too. Um, we have another video on that. So they basically copied everything. So the question it becomes, is that confidential information or are they allowed to basically take the blue books of what they've been doing for the last 20 years and reuse it? So injunctive as well as monetary damages will be necessary to stop GFI from causing further irreparable harm. The plaintiff WFG, it's a limited liability company, existed under the laws of state of Iowa. Accordingly, Wyoming Secretary of State Global Financial Impact is a Wyoming liability company formed October 13, 2023, established exi and existing under the laws in the state of Wyoming, and its principal office is here in Casper. This is an action in law and an equity pursuit to which WFG seeks injunctive relief as well as monetary relief. Uh, WFG's limited liability company comprised of one member, which is Maryland LLC. It's hopefully owned by its subsidiary, Delaware Corporation. Defendant GFI is formed and registered in the state of Wyoming upon information and belief WFG or GFI has concealed from the public the identity of its members and its owners. So they don't really know who all is involved. Um, up a Upon information, information and belief, and as described below, GFI is owned and proper uh, operated by individuals Eric and Sandra, who are former WFG guys, um, who have a residence in California and Florida. WFG is unable to access GFI's citizenship further. So again, they have no clue who's really involved in everything. Due to GFI's unlawful action, WFG has suffered loss in amounts well in excess of 750000 or 75000 So this is showing um, basically which court it's supposed to be in, court jurisdiction. So again, qualifying which judges and courts should be involved. This court has generated um, pers as has generated personal injunction over GFI because it is at home in Wyoming. So this is why they're filing where they are. So let's get into the facts of the case of what WFG is stating, uh, what is actually happening. So WFG provides a business platform individuals who wish to operate their own independent financial services agency. It offers fixed insurance products through WFG and other state affiliated agencies. WFG offers its product providers fixed insurance products to customers through its independent contractor sales force. In addition to offering insurance products to, to customers, the independent contractors recruit other insurance agencies to work with them. The structure is referred to as hierarchy and constitute WFG's confidential information under the hierarchy structure. Insurance agents receive an override from its sales made by their downline. Overrides are a portion of the commission paid by the product provider. Insurance agents work with WFG downline an upline structure which generally consists of hierarchical structure connecting insurance agents to one another and WFG. The teams expand when the existing agents recruit new agents. These teams of insurance agents directly solicit customers for WFG. In some cases, the insurance agents inherit customers from other insurance agents in their hierarchy. Like if you have an agent that uh, leaves the industry, those roll up to you. So that's what they're talking about, inheriting some of those. WFG insurance agents who sell insurance products receive commission from product providers and overrides are paid pr uh, properly to properly licensed insurance agents in the selling insurance agents. Upline, WFG also receives a percentage of the overall commission by, paid by the product provider. When insurance agents leave WFG, the customer and downline who were assigned to that agent are typically reassigned to the departing a insurance agents upline. So they'll reassign leadership if necessary. This is where, uh, this is also the possibility that a qualified leaving agent's customers and downlines could be reassigned to a leaving agent's properly licensed and a qualified spouse if there is a pre existing agreement to do so. So, from my understanding, this is one of the complaints that Eric was having is that you can no longer. Um, refer your business over to a qualified spouse. As far as I understand, that's actually still in place with WFG, if anybody has information on that. Um, but that was one of the things that he was saying why he was leaving. There was also some information from Cofield who put out there saying that they had example of this, which apparently came out to be false. So 
Um, depending on the downline and where a particular license a insurance agent falls within, compensation follows pursuant to a proprietary model that is WFG's confidential information. I don't know how much this can kind of hold up because everybody's duplicated it at this point. Like, uh, how long is it confidential if that's what everybody else does? Like, all the other companies in existence, basically, that have copied WFG's platform. Um, but I think more of what they're talking about, I mean, here they're talking about the proprietary model, but I don't know how much you have to change to not be confidential information at some point. But given WFG's unique compensation and business structure, GFI keeps all the information concerning its business structure, ranking, hierarchy, performance of other agents, compensation structure, non-public customer information confidential with WFG. The hierarchy structure, compensation structure, agent ranking profile, and product provider contracts serve as the lifeblood of WFG's business model. To protect the confidentiality of WFG's business and customer information, WFG enters into agreement with its agents that acknowledges the proprietary and confidential nature of WFG's business and information. The agreement also provides the agreements also provide and the agents acknowledge that the customers are WFG's customers, not the agent's customers. So this is another thing that's kind of under contention here that GFI is claiming to fix is who actually owns the clients. And in talking to some of the WFG agents, apparently uh, some companies will allow you to port out your clients. So if you move to another IMO, you can basically take them with you. Apparently, that's not necessarily the case with WFG. They have other parameters where you can basically sell your book of business, turn it over to your spouse, some other things that they might talk about here in a little bit. So under these agreements, the insurance agents convey that they, among other things, will not disclose any of WFG's confidential information. They will not solicit other insurance agents to work with a competitive business, and they will not disparage WFG. You won't. Uh, in leaving, you're not supposed to talk crap about them and make up lies and stuff. So as part of working with WFG, insurance agents receive access to WFG's confidential information concerning the business structure, hierarchy structure, performance of other insurance uh, and agents and their hierarchy, compensation of insurance agents in the hierarchy, and non-public customer information through a web-based platform called MyWFG. So again, you're not supposed to take that confidential information. It's got client information in there, which makes it kind of a big concern. Um, stuff that's not supposed to be public. So that's part of what they're saying is the challenge. If you're staying with WFG and trying to move people over, you have access to client information that maybe you shouldn't have. You should probably leave WFG first and then move over to whatever company that you want to work with. Any unauthorized disclosure of WFG's confidential information will cause irreparable harm to WFG because it permits customers to replicate WFG's business financial and compensation models and take WFG's insurance agents and customers. Moreover, the confidential uh, confidential hierarchy information highlights which agents are highly performing and would be most desirable to poach. So yeah, they're, they're taking the leaders bulletins from WFG and basically saying, okay, here's the guys that we need to go talk to most. We'll start off with the ones that are making the most and that way we can pull people over. They're saying that they shouldn't be able to do that. The loss of insurance agents and customers coupled with the disclosure of confidential information leads to intangible harm, such as the loss of business goodwill and competitive advantage. That's kind of true because you you uh, you understand the system and how it works, and this is what a lot of the new companies do, but it opens up a good question because WFG is probably now one of the lowest starting commissions. It's probably the highest on the back end, so if you stay with it long enough, it's probably got the highest compensation over there. That's how these guys get to $12 million a year, but it's got one of the lowest. So knowing that though that's usually how they get guys to move over right because you take somebody who's maybe they're making it 50 80 hundred thousand dollars a year and you go hey i can give you an additional five eight ten percent um that could be a big difference for somebody so they they're using that confidential information to recruit people over um because they know the ins and outs of the system and how it works i don't know if that's good or bad or that should be illegal but um, that's kind of what they're saying here is it gives them a competitive advantage because they can look at the points that would be uh, for a new agent to kind of come over. FFL did something very, very similar, and they're having to change their comp structure now because it they weren't able to keep up with what they needed to. They were giving away too much commission. And so now that they've been sold integrity, from my understanding, is they're changing some of that comp. So that's something that could be happening as well, is maybe they're giving away extra comp in the beginning because they don't have a lot of the costs. But what happens five, 10 years from now when that comp has to change 
and they realize, hey, this isn't going to be uh, profitable for the company. It's profitable in that it moves insurance agents over, but it might not be profitable in the company actually making money. So, but those are two different strategies depending on where the company's at. In the beginning, they got to get insurance agents over there, right? So they might be able to give away more comp, and then in the future have to dial that back maybe as the company gets sold or whatever happens, but um, it does give them a competitive advantage. So monetary damages could not uh, adequately remedy the loss of the competitive advantage or the core of its insurance business. So basically just a monetary, uh, which is usually what happens is they'll say, okay, um, you know, Eric or GFI pay this amount of money. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna make WFG whole because losing, I think they're up to 40,000 license agents that they've already lot, if, if not more. And I'll show you the, the marketing that's at 15,000. I'm pretty sure they're not at 15,000 yet, but um, we'll get into that. So you can't just fix that with money. Anyway, um, protect, uh, protects confidential information through contact contractual agreement. So in the agreement contains confidentiality, non-solicitation, and non-disparagement clauses. So these are this is what they're claiming that um, GFI is breaking. So again, it's not that you can't go create another company. That's perfectly fine. You just can't take confidential information. You're not supposed to solicit former agents, and you're not supposed to make disparaging clauses, all of which, if you've been paying attention, um, has been happening. WFG also then entered into executive marketing director agreements. And if anybody has this from GFI, I would love to have it. Paul Hart made a comment the other day on uh, one of my videos and I asked him for it, but they haven't turned it over yet. So if anybody could get me that, I would love to go through that too. But basically your contract changes when you get to executive marketing director. There's some additional ownership programs and things, uh, incentives that you get into. Uh, and I think they have something similar. So GFI, uh, having hired several former WFG agents, including Eric and Sandra Olson, is aware that these of these contracts and their terms. So basically, they obviously have been in the industry long enough to know that they shouldn't be doing these things. Confidentiality provision. I'm not going to read through that again. You can screenshot it if you want. But basically, it's saying that you're not supposed to disseminate or reveal any of that um, confidential information. <clears throat> Even upon termination, you're supposed to return those documents. Down here, non-solicitation provision. Non-solicitation uh, clause states that by law, uh, for up to two years following the termination of this agreement, you shall not either individually or in participation with any other people or companies or contractors or in any other manner directly or indirectly solicit, induce, or entice in any way in any other manner persuade or attempt to persuade any individual who is current agent of WFG and with whom the agent had their business contract with on behalf of WFG as affiliated or related entities to terminate or alter their agent relationship with WFG to join a competing organization. So this is where most of that is, uh, the argument is coming from, is you're really not supposed to do that. But obviously, um, Eric probably doesn't want to leave and leave all of his agents behind. So that's kind of where we've got to figure out, okay, should you be able to take agents over? Are you supposed to leave them according to the agreement that you sign? You're not really supposed to do that. Um, they are kind of uh, debating that over in California. So what's interesting, though, is it's really only within 50 miles, and it's supposed to be for the 18 months after preceding your recruitment. So um, he could have gotten around that pretty easily by just recruiting everybody outside of 50 miles. I, mean, I don't know exactly how that works. If you have multiple offices, that's kind of become... Um, obsolete at this point in that I don't think that, I mean, back if you think 20, 30 years ago, that made sense because you normally worked out of one or two offices close to you. But now with the uh, Zoom, they have offices all over the country. So I don't even know if that specifies anymore. But basically, you're just not supposed to reach out to those guys. So Eric could have left. If they called him, he could say, hey, this is what I'm doing now. You might want to look into it. But that's not the campaign that they're necessarily running. So you're also not supposed to have disparage, uh, non-disparagement provision. You're not supposed to talk crap on your way out. Uh, agent shall not do anything that will damage the business, good name, or reputation of WFG, affiliated companies, and other respective officers, directors, or employees. Now, to be fair, well, I guess that's not entirely true. Um, yeah, because he was the one that came up with stuff. I was going to say, I haven't seen him do it. Mostly it's been other people that I've seen on social media that have been doing it. But apparently, if you get a chance to watch Bosley's interview, which I'll try to remember to link down below as well, that's basically what they're doing on their way out. They're saying WFG is collapsing. Um, all the best people are leaving. So you should probably come over too. 
and um, that's getting people to basically go over not really looking at what's going on because if you think obviously the company that you're with is going to fall apart it might make sense to move over especially with a lot of the things that um, Eric was telling people um, then it could make sense so GFI scheme to raid WFG agents and create a, comp a competing business upon information and belief GFI employers employees or is being operated almost entirely by more than 60 former WFG insurance agents and their spouses. I think that's way higher now. They list a couple of them. Matos resigned from WFG in September 2023, recently announced on social media. Um, Cofield, we did some uh, video about him. Matos, Macias, uh, Hildago, Bayona, Carter, another Carter, Cap Juarez, yeah, uh, Greg Cap. Sure, and I apologize, uh, Mike and Shernowski. I always mess it up. Shernowski, Rosensky, Bove, Olsons um, have all moved over. I think they're closer to about 4,000 agents now. How many of those are actually WFG and how many are not? I don't know. But upon information and belief, uh, GFI's new employees, all or almost all formerly WFG agents, have offices or agents in multiple states, including Wyoming, California, Texas, and Florida. Many GFI employees had offices in 50 miles of one another while they were under contract with GFI, with WFG. So that's obviously breaking their contract. GFI is established in Wyoming as a Wyoming limited liability company for sole purpose of rating WFG agents. He's attempting to move his hierarchy over to his wife, Sandra, when he was under contract. WFG prevented him from doing this. So this is where a lot of the misinformation potentially is coming from because um, Eric is saying that they're getting rid of that provision that you can't send your spouse, your team. But it sounds like WFG was doing it because maybe they get some kind of inkling that they were that he was going to raid people or maybe they thought that that's what was going to happen. So they stopped him from doing it. It doesn't mean they stopped the program entirely for everybody forever. Because um, basically Sandra resigned on October 4th of 2023. And then they um, continued obligation letters of her. Uh, she got an offer. She got a letter from WFG basically saying what her, her obligations were for her contract when she left. On 13th, GFI filed its articles of organization in the state of Wyoming. Consent with the Wyoming practice, the members of limited liability company were not disclosed. So again, they don't know who all is involved or who has ownership in the company. Uh, Sandra filed the registration of out-of-state limited liability company for GFI on the 18th. On the third, November 13, GFI filed its application of registration of foreign limited liability company in the state of Texas, noting the registration of Wyoming. So they're kind of just giving a little bit of background of what they've discovered so far. Uh, it lists Olson as the governing person. Majority of insurance agents in Eric Olson's downline at WFG own or occupy residents in California or Texas. GFI filed the trademark uh, Global Financial Impact Insurance Agency in Wyoming Secretary of State. It lists Sandra as the sole partner or trustee. As shown by the scheme executed shortly after its formation, GFI was formed for the sole unlawful purpose of stealing WFG agents and its insurance agents to enrich the Olsons. GFI's anchor leg strategy. So um, my understanding is that Olson really perfected this in WFG. And so it's kind of interesting that WFG didn't care a lot about it when he was moving WFG insurance agents over to him inside of WFG. But now that he's using it to get people outside of WFG, well, now it's an issue. So I find that a little bit comical. I mean, it's not, obviously, but it's kind of interesting how that works. So he, they're talking about he amassed a hierarchy over 900 insurance agents. Many of these agents were fairly recruited by Olson and their team. Others were not. So obviously they've known about this and it's been happening for a while now and they've just kind of let it go on. In order to foster networking, mentor and grow mentorship and growth, WFG hosts agents for high performing and promising agents that work in teams from across the country and in different hierarchies. Many leaders like Olson use these events to meet insurance agents on teams other than his. Unlike most leaders, Olson use these events to recruit these insurance agents away from team leaders. WFG dis Encouraged this behavior because it created animosity between leaders, created poor morale, and was bad for business. So yeah, they host these events for these leadership opportunities for people to learn as a group. And so that's one of the great things I think about WFG and the structure is that it really fosters people working together. 
The downside to it is if somebody takes advantage of that and starts recruiting people from those events, it really does start to create poor morale and it's bad for business and animosity between the leadership, which you can tell. I mean, a lot of people know what's been happening, even if you're not inside of WFG, you know uh, Eric's uh, motive as far as that goes because he recruits people from all over the place. So obviously... um, that's not supposed to be happening, but that has been happening. Eric Olson, however, devised a way called the anchor leg strategy to avoid detection and recruiting high performance insurance agents away from other WFG insurance agents. They're gonna explain the anchor leg strategy. Basically, one of the spouses would get recruited to the new company or to his agency, and then they would leave the other spouse and then start moving people over, both clients and agents, which obviously you're not supposed to do. He would convince the target to move his or her book of business to the spouse who was on Olson's team. The target would later leave his or her her team and join Olson at the end of the day. Both agents joined Olson's team, which resulted in a loss of income from the team leader and increased income from Olson. We've had several companies uh, started also because of this. The um, some great people have left. Some people that I really liked in the industry. Basically, this happened to them. Their whole team got taken over, and then they WFG didn't do anything about it, and so they left the company or they left the industry altogether simply because you know they spent years and decades building up their agents and their book of business to have a person who's not even supposed to be a competitor. It's one thing if a company outside does it, but when your your teammate, the person on the same team as you, does it, that's it's a whole nother thing. As, uh, as soon as it started, as soon as it was established, GFI through Olson and its other agents adapted this anchor leg strategy in order to amass its workforce and build its business. I would like to know where they're at now. I haven't seen any updates. Last time I saw was about 4,000 people. But basically, they're moving their um, downline from WFG over to GFI, which seems similar almost uh, every time I think they do it. I don't know how because I wasn't here for PHP, but I'm assuming something similar happened like that. I don't know. GFI, through its agents, employees, and co-conspirators, used WFG's confidential and proprietary information to target specific teams. Second, GFI, through its agents, employees, and co-conspirators, recruited one spouse to join GFI. Then they used the anchor leg strategy, basically, to pull the other uh, agents over. So they're kind of re-explaining that. Third, the spouse who remained with WFG would spread lies and misinformation. This is really why all of this started, at least for me, because they had all of these, uh, they were doing all this social media stuff, and it, it was hard to tell what was real and what was not. So that was really why we started all of these things to kind of go through and look at the court documents to see what's actually going on. Because uh, one side was almost completely quiet, the other side was ranting and raving all the time, and, and I just wanted to know what was going on. So, um, they're basically encouraging insurance agents to resign from WFG and go over, over to GFI using those lies and that misinformation, or, or at least allegedly. The owner, the Olsons and other GFI agents were, who were loyal to GFI planned to leave WFG for GFI after fraudulently collecting instru- income streams, recruiting as many WFG insurance agents as possible, and tendering the winter conference in Hawaii later this year, all at WFG's expense. They're talking again about the leg, uh, anchor leg strategy that's actually being carried out right now. That's where most of the agents are coming from. Uh, Sharonowski joined GFI in January of 2022, while her husband, Michael, stayed remaining at WFG and actively recruiting insurance agents over to GFI until he was terminated for cause on January 25th. Mary Jane Carter joined GFI in January, same kind of thing, recruiting agents, uh, their agents over to GFI. Upon information and belief, GFI's top producers are all or virtually all former WFG insurance agents. And you can see that they keep posting these um, top performer things on social media. And so you can tell exactly who's gone over. Um, Interfered in interfering with countless WFG insurance agents. Yeah, that's a good point. It brings up a lot of doubt for the people that are staying in. Um, it's not an employee workforce. Like these are people that you're friends with, that you have relationships with. Sometimes they're uh, family members. And so it's creating a lot of disruption in WFG um, that people are kind of unsure of what to do. And they're trying to figure out what to, do I stay? Do I go? 
Um, and, and if you read some of the, the conversations that have been happening, that makes it kind of tough. Upon information and belief, the current and former WFG insurance agents involved in GFI schemes were already participating in the schemes when they were encouraged by GFI to enter into their most recent annual renewable con the renewal contracts. GFI begins recruiting. So early January 2024, GFI, through its insurance ag its agents and co-conspirators, including information believe current or former GFI employees and agents such as the Olsons and it lists the names of the other ones. They set up secret meetings with their friends and colleagues in person to denigrate WFG, tout the benefits of GFI, encourage colleagues to join GFI while still under contract with WFG. GFI's agents and co-conspirators preferred not to discuss the plan over the phone, but meet in person, use confidential self-deleting applications like Signal. So this is all just kind of going to the notice of um, did they know what they were doing was illegal or were they just kind of moving to a new company? And so it's kind of showing more fault that they obviously were knew that what they were doing wasn't uh, on board because they're using self-deleting applications like Signal to have these conversations. Each time a GFI agent met with WFG agent, they were asked uh, the insurance agents to, to do an NDA, non-disclosure form, and attempt to conceal GFI schemes. Sometimes they would ask them to shut off their phone, verify that the phone was off, then they would make false statements about WFG. They would claim that WFG was stealing some sort of ownership that properly belonged to the insurance agents. They claimed WFG did not provide for total business ownership, meaning WFG uh, insurance agents could not personally own their book of business. They claimed that spouses of high-performing insurance agents could not receive the income stream if those agents died suddenly. There was nothing short of false propaganda designed to induce WFG insurance agents to join GFI. In no time, the scheme took a very dark turn. For example, Cofield launched a social media platform against WFG. In one post, he claimed that GFI left a widow without any income uh, after her husband, a WFG insurance agent, had died suddenly. The story was completely fabricated. The widow was also upset with these false statements, and she appeared on a YouTube uh, interview. If anybody has this, if you can send that to me, I would really appreciate it. I'll see if I can find it. Also said straight that she was happy with the way that she was treated with WFG, and Cofield's victims were completely false. But even today, w, uh, GFI agents, employees, and co-conspirators continue to peddle the same lies about GFI. GFI insurance agents are falling for them, including baseless claims that WFG is a uh, is in precarious financial position and would not make it much longer. So they're saying that um, WFG's finances are not good. The false claim that only select WFG insurance agents would be showered with riches and special roles in GFI when those uh, phony promises were being peddled to hundreds of targets. The empty promises that massive private equity firm was backing GFI with unlimited resources when there was no evidence of that backing. But since they don't know who is uh, basically part of the company because it's in Wyoming, maybe that, that could still be true. The suggestion that everyone would receive equity when GFI never intended to provide equity to all of those who made the offer. Yeah, this was kind of interesting too. We read the GFI contract about ownership. I haven't seen anything in there that's like, wow, that would make a big difference. They still claim ownership over the prospects of the clients, of the agents. They have a non-solicitation clause in there. You can go see that video as well. It doesn't seem like it has that, but maybe that's what's in that EMD contract that we haven't seen yet. So to be fair, we just might not know about it yet. The hollow offer to countless agents that they would receive a broad, uh, board of director seat when in fact there would only be about five board seats. The false claims of WFG uh, consultant Rich Thalley would be part of GFI. That'd be kind of crazy if he was one of the owners, right? I mean, I don't think he is, but that would be kind of funny at the end of the day, right? Um, as several sworn declarations showed, uh, Thalley has never been a part of GFI and believes that any agents who follow Olson are making a terrible mistake. The promises to some that hierarchies would be maintained with GFI while promises um, to others indicated that they would not. GFI's and ag uh, agents, employees, and co-conspirators originally directed these lies to the downline insurance agents so that they could line up those recruits to use them to force the uplines to move to GFI or see their income evaporate. So basically, if you had an agency, they were coming in, if you told them no, or they didn't think that you were willing to go, they would come in, recruit your people over, and say, if you don't come with us, you're going to lose all of your income. So some people are kind of caught up in this mess that maybe didn't want to go, but felt obligated because their income was going to evaporate. And, you know, if you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, you probably don't want to see that happen. But I think this is going to be one of the biggest money makers for 
uh, Eric at the end of the day. He gets to redesign his entire structure and bring the top performing agents closer to him uh, and kind of lay out how he wants to do that. So if you're in his good graces, that could be good for you, but maybe if you're not, that might not be. In other instances, GFI agents and employees and co-conspirators recruited WFG insurance agents that were upline and incentivized them to bring their downline. So if they could get the upline, the, the agent who's maybe running that office, they would recruit that person to then also bring over their downlines. If they said no, then they would go in and recruit everybody in the office and then force the one who's running the office basically to come over as well. So when they successfully solicit a few WFG insurance agents to join GFI, they would provide those agents with firewall document. So again, this all goes to intent, right? Where they just kind of caught up in this thing where they created a new company and people were coming over voluntarily, or were they purposefully soliciting and had the intent to take people? And so providing all these documents kind of shows that there's intent. Uh, they'll say what a firewall document is, basically instructed the agent to check a box no for the question, has anyone on behalf of GFI uh, or its affiliates offered you any inducement to cancel, replace, or upgrade any products or services from any organization which you have been affiliated? So basically they're, they're saying that they've never been solicited when obviously they were clearly solicited. So this is kind of a CYA. They're hoping that when it goes to court, so they're already thinking three steps ahead. And I got to give it to Eric here. He has been three or four steps ahead the entire time on this whole thing. And it seems like every time uh, WFG has a response to it, he's just kind of already on to the next thing. So that's why I'm saying I don't think it's really going to impact GFI in the long run. These insurance agents also signed a contract and statement that said, I will not violate any contracts or agreements between uh, the subjects post-termination of any agency. I have not been solicited or directly or indirectly by any representative of GFI to cancel, replace, upgrade any products or services to leave our current organization to join GFI. So obviously that's false, uh, and that's what they're saying here. Attempt to protect GFI and its um, employees and violated that and that these statements were obviously false and remain to be false today. So kind of a CYA on these people coming over. So they were expecting to go to court basically is what they're saying. Uh, if you wanna see this full video, I think it's really, really good. It gives some great insight to how all this stuff is happening with Nick Bosley. It's on one of the videos. I'll remember to put that uh, video attached to this one as well. But basically he talks about what exactly is happening behind closed doors. So on the third, Olson acting as an agent with GFI met with Bosley at Olson's office in California, which was previously a WFG or a Pinnacle office, but now it didn't say either of those. Now it said global financial impact when Bosley walked in. And this before Bosley knows anything that's going on. So as soon as he walked into the office, uh, the assistant required him to sign an NDA. Bosley signed, and then he appeared uh, in the office to talk to Olson. Olson asked him to turn off his phone, made sure it was shut off. He spewed a number of false statements about WFG, including Bosley's family who would be left without any income if he had died. He told Bosley about the new company that him and his wife had formed uh, with support by um, narrative, oops. Uh, basically that they were giving a private equity operation. Olson offered Bosley one of the five board positions. Bosley offered to go direct to GFI, meaning that he would not have his upline. So again, this is kind of talking about Olson being able to bring those top performing agents closer to him, which he gets a higher uh, compensation from. Olson promised Bosley greater compensation across the board if he moved to GFI with agents taking a higher percentage, GFI receiving a smaller percentage of payments over target. He claimed Thali was moving over. Um, he was telling them basically that he would have each agent sign an NDA and would protect them legally in an effort to hide GFI's scheme. Olson asked Bosley to download an encrypted self-deleting message signal so they could discuss further promoting agents, employees, co-conspirators of these lies to entice Bosley from coming over. So Bosley, in that interview, I think it was really, really good. He talks about it. It made sense of everything that Olson was telling him was true, then it would make sense to go over to GFI. If the company was collapsing, if we had lost ownership, or if they had lost ownership, if they were no longer allowed to pass these things onto their spouse or sell their code number, and if Dolly was going over and all the leadership was going over, because this is kind of a constant thing that's happened in the industry. It's how most of these companies kind of came about, which we talked about in the beginning. So he was kind of like, oh, okay, that kind of made sense. Uh, but after the meeting, as Bosley attempted to verify a lot of these statements, 
among other things, of talking with Thali. Thali informed Bosley he was not on the board of directors with GFI and encouraged Bosley to stay with WFG. As he dug into it further, he realized that most of the, the pitches were lies. Most of the things that he was being told were lies. So convinced um, that leaving WFG for GFI was a grave mistake, Bosley warned his colleagues against the scheme and uh, shared his story. Rob Day had some similar experience. Basically, um, he had been contacted uh, by Olson, uh, had other agents in his hierarchy that Olson had tried to recruit to them. Uh, Day had got information about that. He heard that GFI was open under Sandra's name and Eric Olson was running the business. Basically, during this call, um, they had talked over the phone. He was basically sharing the plans with Day um, and that he would basically be well taken care of. He would show loyalty to them. Ironically, Day was higher up in the hierarchy than Olson. Falsely claimed that Thali would be going. So again, you're just kind of seeing a re repetition of the same thing. He learned about the anchor leg scheme. He learned... Um, he attended several Zoom meetings in which that he would uh, state to act the colleagues to look carefully at GFI before deciding whether to go or not after the pitch. Since then, Day noticed several of other agents in his downline had made disparaging statements about him and attempted to damage his career by sending uh, messages in a large group me communication. So obviously that's coming probably from Olson um, trying to recruit those guys. Nathan Showrack had a similar uh, situation with Michael Kornowski. Again, I apologize for mispronouncing your name. Had him sign an NDA, instructed him um, by his up... So that's his upline agent, basically told him that he needed to follow him to GFI, regurgitated the same uh, stuff that Olson said to Bosley, that Dolly would be going over, that large product providers were currently under contract. He promised higher commissions. Um, he and then Showrack did not understand how that would be possible if GFI expected to make enough money to operate and be profitable. So again, it kind of opens that door. Is it a, a preliminary offer thing that you get a, a higher contract up front that has to be changed in the future to actually be profitable for the company? Uh, they claim that Summit Global Investments, a competitor of WFG, uh, is, who's currently poaching advisors from TFA, that's great. So uh, while GFI is poaching them, so are uh, Summit Global Investment. I don't understand why. If your stuff is so good, then just go out and do it. Just like sell your stuff. Why do you have to take people from other people? Um, it's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, that would operate as the broker dealer. So right now they're just, they only offer insurance. They don't do any of the um, security stuff like they, like WFG does through Transamerica Financial Advisors. SGI is not currently a registered broker and thus cannot cons not uh, serve in that capacity. doesn't mean they couldn't in the future, but as of right now, they can't actually operate that way. Um, Chernowski had already joined GFI and was earning money while he remained with WFG. They talked again about the anchor leg strategy. They were on a conference call with Thali, Ed, and other senior marketing directors at this conference call. Thali suggested that going to GFI was not a wise decision. Shorek learned that others in his hierarchy, including Hildago, had been promoted on GFI and other social media platforms. So this was one of the hardest things, is most of these people didn't really see this coming. We just learned all of it through social media, the vast majority of it. Uh, when he saw the recruiting bulletin from GFI, the, bulletin, the leader's bulletin identified GFI's top producers. All were spouses of current or former WFG insurance agents, such as Alexandra Welsh, Bayona, Hart, Hildago, and Carter. These bulletins revealed GFI used WFG's list of high-performing insurance agents and targeted their spouses using the anchor-like strategy. It was just a beginning, but was already working to grow GFI. Uh, advertising scheme. They were spreading uh, news by more than just word of mouth. They were using social media. They created a flyer, a company overview concerning the move to GFI on or about the 10th. Led a company overview meeting a Zoom with about 250 viewers. So they have the GFI company open. They're acting as an agent with WFG. They hop on a Zoom meeting and they're convincing all their WFG agents to move over. There was about 250 people in attendance on that Zoom call. The overview was led by former WFG insurance agent Welsh, who had been terminated by WFG and whose wife still remained as an agent with WFG. Another former agent, WFG Dove, uh, presented his wife 
was still an agent with WFG, so they're illustrating that anchor leg strategy that they're using. The information presented during the company overview made it clear that GFI's business model, including its hierarchy, structure, and compensation agreements, were nearly identical to and based a large part of that on WFG. It was plainly developed for GFI with its knowledge and current and former WFG insurance agents using WFG's confidential business information. They continue to execute their scheme on or about the 17th, a few days after news of GFI spread like wildfire, WFG leadership held a presentation to establish support for uh, WFG. Dolly uh, McGinnis presented at the meeting, high-ranked EMD, um, experienced a similar thing with uh, GFI's illegal recruitment, according to them. GFI's, or McGinnis's refused to meet with Olson. However, I participated in a meeting on the 17th. Uh, Olson said, I guess you made your decision. I wish you well. Mag McGinnis ignored his communication. On the 20th, he asked to meet McGinnis in Florida and threatened McGinnis to, um, disparaging him. He would hear from Olson's lawyer. So if, if McGinnis spoke out, then he was threatened by Olson to not uh, share any of that information. Olson made similar litigation threats against other WFG insurance agents who told the truth. Uh, GFI's agents, employees, co-conspirators... Um, held a separation Saturday event on the 20th as part of GFI's all-out assault on WFG insurance agents to uh, in efforts to elicit them to recruit them over to GFI. Every day, GFI and its agents, employees, and co-conspirators solicit against WFG insurance agents violating their agreement and the law. Every day, GFI and its agents, employees, co-conspirators continue to spread lies and disparaging information. Uh, and that's why we wanted to do this, so that you could find out what's actually going on and what's true. GFI recently directed several WFG insurance agents who were secretly working for GFI to use their administrative positions to prevent WFG from onboarding new insurance agents. On uh, information and belief, GFI was directing these new insurance agents to join the company instead of WFG. Wow, that's interesting. That was a new one. So basically, they're operating as WFG agents, but then they're recruiting people over to GFI. Interesting. So these actions are continuing to irreparably harm WFG and deprive it of its business advantage and confidential information, good reputation, valuable insurance agents. These unlawful actions create anxiety for WFG insurance agents. That's true because they don't know if the lies are true or not. And, and they have a lot of trust in their leadership. Everything that we do is everything that we do in the industry is based on leadership. And so if, if somebody that you trust is saying these things, that, or even maybe that you don't trust, but you're not entirely sure if it's true or not, somebody who has authority, um, that can create potential harm to WFG and uh, their business relationships. Again, not relieved by purely just monetary um, damages. Then they're going to go in and just talk about how all of these relate. They have to make basically that their statements uh, actually confine with the law. And so they're just going to reiterate the same things that we read toward this inf interference with contracts. So if you want to go through and read this, I'll make sure that I post that. But they're going to reiterate basically the same thing that they're saying um, in there. Basically, breach they were breaching their contracts, the way that they're acting is unlawful. The second clause is civil conspiracy. And they're going to go through similar things, basically uh, the way that they had unfair and unlawful advantage, confidential information, repeating a lot of the same stuff that we already heard. Next, they're claiming that there's fraud. <clears throat> basically, the way that they um, insurance agents resigned from WFG and then started their business with GFI. Continuing down, um, the next one is going to be unjust enrichment. Again, applying all the things that they've already talked about, that they had confidential inf business information, that it's hierarchy, structure, compensation, insurance agents, business with other insurers has all been used, and then spreading lies and misinformation, <clears throat> that they're mis misappropriately using confidential information on behalf of GFI, conversion, <clears throat> again, confidential information. Sorry, I just... I'm trying to be thorough, but not super repetitive on this stuff. Co-conspirators are just kind of re-explaining how each one of these falls into each one of these categories. Jury demanded, so they wanted to go to trial, federal rules of civil procedure, prayer and relief. This is what they're asking for. They want a temporary restraining order against GFI so that they stop their raid 
um, of agents. They want a temporary restraining order order on any employees and contractors working with them. Temporary restraining order um, to keep them from making false information, deceptive and disparaging statements against WFG insurance agents. They want one uh, restraining order preliminary injunction against the defendants to disclose its members to WFG. So they want to know who all is involved. Um, are there other people involved? Is Thal? I don't think he is, but um, they would know for sure. Is Thali involved? Or um, who, who's funding these things? All that kind of stuff. They want that information. According to WFG's um, compensatory, punitive, and other damages in the amount proven at trial, they want attorney fees and interest, and then whatever else the court deems. And this one was filed towards the end of January, very similar to when these other ones were filed. So hopefully that gives you kind of a good understanding of what's going on in that particular um, lawsuit as, as GFI gets ramped up. Again, I don't think this is going to be a huge deterrent for them. I don't think it's going to stop them. It hasn't for other companies in the future. And then one more thing I want to share really quick as we kind of wrap up here is So I thought this was kind of interesting. Somebody sent this to me. It looks like maybe, I think they said it was from LinkedIn. I tried to block, but down here they even had their license number on there, which I think is not a good idea. So basically they're sending out mass um, mass information uh, to people that they don't really know. And basically it was searching the state records. So they got the, when you get your license, um, all of the information goes to the state. And so they've taken those state records and basically they're reaching out to all of those uh, insurance agents. And then here's kind of where the claim gets interesting. And they say that they have a proprietary system that has grown into the largest brokerage at our company. It's now over 15,000 agents. I don't think that's necessarily accurate, of which 100 agents are making over a million dollars per year. Uh, that seems like a far stretch for me. Maybe that's their goal to get there, but to claim that I think is um, probably not a good thing. That's how you lose your license. The insurance agents were helped, um, who we've helped don't have to cold call, they don't have to buy leads. It's just super easy. You just join and you make a million dollars a year. Uh, this system can help people with your skills to dramatically increase their income. If you're interested, get more information. Um, he's got some of, I probably should have blocked his phone number too. I apologize about that. But it also had his email address and his license number and everything else. So probably not a good idea to be doing that. So just be careful. I think that that is still inaccurate information. Maybe at some point they'll get to 15,000 licensed agents. But um, yeah, anyway, so that kind of gives you an understanding of what's going on in that uh, particular lawsuit. And we'll kind of go from there as we get more information. I don't think the, co the court date is actually even until May. March, yeah, it's not even until May. So the I don't think the rating of WFG and agents is going to stop anytime soon. So if you're with WFG, you still need to have this conversation with your guys. If any of these videos help, please share them. Um, if you're starting into GFI, uh, just know there's probably going to be changes that happen when that lawsuit actually finishes up. I think the one with Patrick took two or three years even to resolve once it actually started. And so this one doesn't start till May and maybe a year or two after that till it actually gets resolved. Who knows? I don't know. So anyway, hope that was helpful for you. Appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate all the positive feedback and people have been reaching out saying thank you. Um, I was kind of concerned in posting some of these videos. So that is definitely helpful. And I appreciate you guys reaching out for that. So anyway, love you guys. Take care. Have a great one.